Welcome to Band Geek. I'm Richie Castellano. Today's episode is awesome. I got a really nice treat for you guys. We're going to be speaking to Rusty Smith and Rob Edmondson, who are audio mixers for television. Uh, that means all the sounds you hear, the dialogue, the music, the sound effects, they're in charge of making it sound great and placing it in 5.1. They have one of the coolest jobs ever. I got to meet Rusty Smith recently at a BOC show. He's a friend of Kasim's. And... Um, I just spoke to him briefly, and he blew my mind with what he does for a living, and I figured this is perfect for Band Geek. And not only is he mixing audio, the show he's currently mixing is The Gifted, which is a comic book show. Yes, perfect. It's a Marvel comic show on Fox based in the X-Men universe, so it's like a spinoff of the X-Men movies. So if you haven't seen that, check it out. It's on Fox. And the really cool thing is we're actually going to Skype with them in a minute, and they're going to show us them mixing the show. You can see the big screen and everything, and the uh, producers of The Gifted have graciously allowed us to use the audio and the, the the images from that show. So thank you guys very much. Thank you to Fox and the guys who make that show. You're helping us out, and we're making a great Band Geek episode today. It's going to be so much fun. Uh, but before we get started, I want to take care of some business. Please help support Band Geek by going to richiecastellano.com slash tipjar, and that's a regular PayPal form, and your contributions help us to keep this amazing content and the funny stuff and the goofy stuff and all that stuff that you like. That helps us keep going, and we appreciate it immensely. If you use Amazon, go to riotcast.com slash bandgeek and hit the Amazon link at the top of the page, and that takes you to Amazon, and then you do your shopping like normal, but when you're done, a small percentage of your purchase goes to supporting our show, and it doesn't cost you anything extra. So I can't wait for you guys to see this. Here we go. We're going to Skype in with Burbank at the studio with Rusty and Rob and enjoy. Okay. We're here with Rusty Smith and Rob Edmondson. And where are you guys right now? Uh, we're in Burbank, California at Westwind uh, Audio. Uh, Westwind Post. What is it called exactly? Westwind Studios. Westwind Studios. <laughs> And they have uh, six rooms here. Uh, I think it's like three, four, four mixed rooms. Yeah. An ADR room. stage and a Foley stage. And what else? Yeah. Four mixed rooms, an ADR stage, and a Foley stage. This is the coolest room, though. The, of course, we're in the coolest we're room. Yeah, this, yeah. Is, this is mix one, and it's an Atmos room. And wow. uh, here, uh, it's the room's being four walled by Universal Studios. Uh, uh, because they, they're they so booked up that uh, they had to four-wall this place. And uh, we're mixing uh, two shows here, and the show that we're working on this evening is Gifted, which is on Fox, and it's a Marvel uh, show. So it's, uh, it's about all these mutants and their <laughs> powers, and they're dealing with all the evil uh, government people. So uh, And it airs on uh, Monday nights on Fox, and it's uh, apparently doing well, from what we understand. So uh, that's cool. You, you threw out a couple of terms I have to ask you about. First of all, uh, four-wall, what, what does that mean? Uh, well, uh, Universal is a, a, a large um, – they have a large sound department, but it's not large enough for the amount of work they have. And so they actually are renting a studio, another facility – uh, and and we are mixing the show for Universal at Westwind, which is not a part of Universal, and so essentially we're clients. Okay, so that's what that's what that term means. And the other term, which I'm familiar with, but I think our viewers won't be, is Atmos. You said that Atmos is a Dolby. Uh, we are not mixing in Atmos. We're mixing in five one on this show, uh, but uh, Atmos is a is a uh, is a Dolby uh, monitoring system that has. Um, uh, essentially allows you to have um, sounds coming from much more, many more places, and it's more three-dimensional. We're that, not doing it But this is an Atmos room, but we're not mixing in that format here on this show. Uh, are there are there more speakers in Atmos? Is that how that's achieved? Yes. Okay. Yeah. They're overhead. Yeah, they're, oh. you, they're, you've got them overhead, and, and, and you can literally do get the effect of, of altitude with sound. So you're mixing this show. Um, so... Talk about what you get from the uh, the people who make the show. Like, what what assets are you getting? Oh, we're getting a lot of grief. <laughs> uh, oh, Bob, you you go. Well, I, what we get, we're the last stage of uh, putting the show together, so we get the, the final picture, and we get sound, uh, audio files. Rusty's doing the dialogue and music. I'm doing the sound effects, backgrounds, foley. And so we each uh, 
we each get it and we see what we have and we mix separately and we mix together and we try to uh, put the, the show together to have a cohesive soundtrack. Wow. And how many tracks do you typically get? He gets more than I. Yeah, I, I, uh, I probably get over 100 tracks. Oh, my God. Well, on this show, you had like 300 <laughs> the first <laughs> we, two we, episodes. We, we pared it down a bit, but uh, <laughs> we're, at, we're in a good place now, and it's, it's probably around 100 tracks. So, okay, um, I'm sure – it looks like you have a session up behind you. We're going to go into that um, in a second, but I just want to ask you some – conceptual mixing questions because I'm I'm an engineer and a lot of the people that watch this show are, you know, audio inclined. So when you're mixing 5.1, now, okay, stereo is easy because stereo is fixed. Everybody's stereo is like two speakers, the same volume. But, you know, how do you know that your mix is not going to, is going to sound good on some Yutz's uh, 5.1 setup when he has like the, the, <laughs> the subwoofer all the way well, up and the rear's too loud? No, well, you know, uh, the, the Yutz could screw up his own system, and so we have no control over that. Uh, but but <laughs> let's let's hope let's hope most people are not Yutzes. Um, uh, the 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 idea is that um, uh, the you set a sound pressure level with uh, paint noise, uh, and uh, so uh, the speakers all have the same uh, SPL sound pressure level coming out of them. You tune a room typically at eighty five dB for theatrical release. Uh, we're working uh, at 81.5 dB SPL for each speaker source, except uh, except the surrounds. Are they lower or are they the same? The surrounds are lowered three. Yeah, they're lowered by three. And now, then, wh yeah, why uh, is that? Um, I don't know. That's what they came up with. <laughs> These uh, the format. Craig, why is that? Well, uh, Craig, come on in, shot. <laughs> oh, so, hi, Craig. Craig. Engineer here. I'm the chief engineer here at Westwind. Uh, the the main reason, I guess, is because uh, they wanted the surrounds to be not overpowering from the front. Mm -hmm. um, nowadays, uh, people don't really know that you have to SPL the, the rears differently. So most people just SPL the whole room at 85. So we have uh, some shows that raise the surrounds up three and uh, some shows that do it at, in a film standard. So it's more of a theatrical thing to have them lowered, but nowadays uh, people turn them up because they just want to be surrounded by it. <laughs> now, now here's a, here's an interesting question. Um, so you're talking about monitoring. You're you're monitoring them the less three dB in the back. Yeah. So does that mean that your mix will be rear heavy? No, 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 no. It it. It's, it's it's so it's not rear light basically. I right. think that that's that's more more of what 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 the thing is. Um, you know, just if, if the louder they are, you know, the you know things in the surrounds. You want certain things in the surrounds. You don't want certain things in the surrounds. You don't want an audience member to go, "What the hell was that?" You know, and so you know you don't want to have transient sort of things in the surrounds um, unless it's on purpose. I mean, you know, one of the great things, uh, you know, and one of the first surround things was, um, um, uh, shucks, e, uh, not E.T. Full Apocalypse. That was great. But, but what was the movie with uh, the that they went to the mountain? Uh, um, Lord of the Rings. Close Encounters. Close Encounters, oh, okay. yeah, Close Encounters. But one of the great things was the helicopter flying around. the That blew away audience's mind. You know, it was one of the first surround movies because it was, it was a pretty long time ago. And it was like, you know, <laughs> and it was like, Whoa! you know, this blew everybody's mind. You know, this is amazing. So, uh, yeah, you know, but that's – so anyway. And then there's a, there's a, a, uh, an LFE speaker, which is low-frequency effect, a sub speaker, and it's, it's at 91 dB uh, SPL. And um, at least – they were at Sony, or they in here? Yeah. Um, okay. Another reason why people don't put a lot in the surrounds is because of the Dolby Pro Logic encoding. Actually, it's phase canceling. Um, so yeah, anything you put back there will disappear in stereo. Yeah. That was my next question. Um, how do, are you thinking about people who are watching in stereo or on yeah. like phones? Totally. Uh, we, you know, it, this is all totally downward compatible. We mix in five one. It's it's discrete and uh, and. We deliver a 5-1 mix to the network. Uh, we also deliver to uh, the network a, a, an LT-RT, which is a stereo mix, which is left total, right total. But 
they don't use that for broadcast. Nowadays, it's it's typically in the box at the house where that where that down convert is occurring. Uh, but we uh, of course have to know how it's going to translate to uh, two speakers, and so uh, we will when we play back the first playback we do. We mix in, on the big speakers and the theatrical speakers, 5-1. And then the first playback we do, we go down to two stereo speakers and do that playback there to see how it translates. And I'll sit there and, and I'll have uh, you know the, the major components all kind of just sum together on a few faders for myself of what I've mixed, the dialogue and the music and the group. And I'll just kind of you know ride it a little bit. you know Just if I, if I hear, oh, there's too much... Uh, group going on right there i'll pull the group back if the music's too loud i'll pull it back etc and so i'll get a little tiny balance but I'm, I'm talking like pushing or pulling one or two db on those elements as i'm and literally as i'm as i'm hearing it you know and and uh, reacting to it so and, and bob he, he doesn't do that so much uh but i, I tend to do that i've, I've always felt that it, it helps you know because i know the next playback is going to be for the the people that run the show and uh, you, you don't want it to be out of balance. You want to get as close as you can before they come in and hear it. Otherwise, you might get fired. <laughs> <laughs> like, and the, the, another interesting thing to me is when you're listening to I – have, I have a 5.1 system in my house. I'm, I'm a big sound nerd. I love having it. Um, you know, do you always put dialogue in the, the center speaker? 95% of the time, sure. But <clears throat> you have – uh, you have uh, in, any, in any scene, you, you, you have, someone will just walks out of shot, going, "Well, I can't stand it here. I'm leaving." You know, and, <laughs> shot, you know, uh, then you know you go, well, "Hell, there's I'll pan that guy as he walks out." You know, so you pan him, you know, and uh, and and then you pan the feet, you know, and that little little twirl for the folks there at home. And uh, uh, so, but most of the time, you keep it in the center, uh, and. Um, but as far as uh, the, the the four corners, the left, the right, and the rear left, right, you know, when it comes to Walla, sure, you know, I'll have just you know some chatter going on uh, for, for 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 ancillary stuff. And Walla is for those of your viewers that don't know, they have a group come in of people uh, that are quote unquote actors, and uh, they sit there and go, "Well, how are you doing today?" I mean, and and, and basically. <laughs> they're just they're just making stuff up, right? For people that are in shot that are and while they're shooting, of course they're going. Yeah, it. They're just they're just moving their mouth, and uh, and they got then they hire actors to come in and go. Well, how are you doing? And, and whatever, and, and so they're just talking, right? And so I've got these faders full of all these people with all these little conversations. And one of the funnier things to do is as you're mixing is just a solo and go. What are they saying? You know. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> um, now. Rusty, you and I met. Um, we have a mutual friend in Kasim Sultan, uh, yeah. who who I you know a very close friend of mine. I played with him in Blue Oyster Cult, um, and he was telling me. He said, "You know, you gotta go to one of Rusty's sessions and see how he does it. It's amazing." And um, he said, "You also work on Ray Donovan." Yeah. Uh, what yeah. are some of the other shows you work on? Mm -hmm. So, what was the question? Uh, what was some of the the other shows that you work on? Oh gosh, we've worked on a heck of a lot of shows. Uh, we, Masters of Sex. Masters of Sex. We did that one. Uh, How was the Foley on that? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it was <laughs> that's, actually it was very interesting. Uh, we did uh, Justified, which was on the FX network. It was a great show. That was uh, Timothy Oliphant was the star of that show, mm -hmm. and that was a great show to mix because he was extremely cool, hand Luke kind of guy, and then he'd always get in a fight with somebody in, at some point in the show and beat the hell out of him. And Bob would, of course, make him sound tougher than he was. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, so, you know, and over the years, I mean, uh, we've, we we started mixing together about four years ago, maybe five. And uh, before that, you know, uh, you know, I'm pretty up there in years. I mixed a lot of shows starting back in the 90s. I mixed The Simpsons for 15 years. Whoa. Uh, <laughs> and uh, I mixed uh, Deadwood and Rome. And Bob mixed a bunch of stuff over at Universal. Yeah, like the event. Yeah. Um, uh, some of the Law and Order shows, you know, Criminal Intent. His first show he ever mixed was Dallas. Can you believe that? Whoa. Dallas. He was like <laughs> five years that. old. Okay. <laughs> I want to tell my mom she loved that show. <laughs> but, you know, my co-host who's usually with me, it's a little late for him because uh, um, it's right now it's 7 
around 7 20 p- p.m by you guys yeah. and it's uh because they're in in on the west coast and obviously it's 10 20 p.m by me uh but our my co-host is a huge simpsons fan so i'm almost <laughs> glad he's not here because he'd ask you a thousand questions right now and we never get to see anything but <laughs> but one of the things that uh well first let me ask you something else are you guys uh always a team now do you always mix together yeah yeah, pretty much. We started working together four or five years ago, and recently, you know, we did some work at Universal uh, earlier this year on a show called Midnight Texas, and uh, what was the other one called? Uh, Thank Ta- Taken. Taken. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> and uh, so it was Taken in Midnight Texas. We did those two shows over at uh, Universal, and we were we came went over to Sony to mix uh, Ray Donovan, and then uh, we got a phone call going, "Hey, you guys want to come over here and like work here for good?" And we went, "Sure." So we just decided to go over there, and but. <laughs> We're, we're here on their behalf at West Wind. So, yeah, we mix together all the time. And, uh, I mean, occasionally you mix with someone else uh, just because of the way things work out. Time. But, you know, everybody in, in L.A. is, you know, I mean, it's like uh, I, I had to mix. He had to mix some pilots with another mixer, and I had to mix some pilots with another mixer. I mixed a, a pilot for uh, this thing called uh, Kevin Probably Saves the World, uh, uh with uh, Matt Waters, who mixes um, uh, what the hell is Game it? of Thrones? Game of Thrones. Mm-hmm. He's the effects mixer on Game of Thrones. So you know, everybody there's there's a there's a group of like a, maybe a you know 50, 60 mixers in town, and everybody kind of knows who everybody is, and you you run into them at you know at the award ceremonies, essentially, you know, or at the you know that kind of stuff. Now I know that um, you're a musician because you were uh, texting me Helix stuff because you and I are both uh, oh, yeah. we're Helix users and guitar players. Um, is that the path that takes you to being a, a TV show audio mixer? Like, how did you get into this? Yeah, well, I, you know, um, yeah, I'm a player and I uh, write music and do all that stuff. And I have stu- I have a studio at my house and uh, and I was a music recording engineer back. I started in the uh, 19, late 1970s, early 1980s. And I was actually, you know, for several years was, you know, I'd go in and, you know, it would be a rhythm set. It was like doing commercials, you know, you it'd be a rhythm, you know. It'd be a rhythm date at nine o'clock. Then you'd have strings at ten o'clock, and then you'd have brass at eleven o'clock, and then you'd have percussion, and then vocals, and then you'd mix it, and then deliver and cut it all up and deliver it. You know. Wow. But then I saw the music industry, the record industry, and the music industry kind of collapsing around when MIDI came out, and then when when digital came out, and and DAWs came out, it was like, oh, you got to do something different here. And so I figured that this was uh, more going to be something that would work, and I was lucky enough to get into it. I moved from Texas to California to do that, as a matter of fact. Uh, what about you, Rob? Do you have a similar path? Into no. The I, I mean, I, I, I just started working in the, in the mailroom at a company that did post-production in Burbank wow. called Compact Video, and I got in pretty early, and uh, you just meet people, and then I, I, I found out what they were doing there, which was mixing sound for movies. And then, uh, you know, you just talk to people and then you get, a, you know, they train you and you train on your own time. And then, you know, when there's an opening, if they like you, they'll hire you. And then you just move up through that way. Wow. So you train pretty much on the job, like from an intern sort of yeah. position. Yeah. It was basically just, I didn't know anything about it, saw what they were doing and then said, hey, I want to do that too. Uh, what about you, Rusty? Do you have uh, any formal audio training? I do not. I, it was, uh, you know, the first gig I had in a, in a studio First gig I had was uh, me and two other guys built a studio, and we had a commercial enterprise that we were, we we did the worst recordings anybody had ever heard probably, and uh, and then I got it you know had enough tapes and I, I got a job uh, at a at a recording studio as a as a uh, as a assistant engineer, and the first three months the only thing I did was uh, like you know clean the bathroom, deliver coffee, paint curb stops, and that kind of stuff, and then they finally uh, you know said okay. Go pick up that microphone cable and put it over there. You know, and that was my you know, that was the first instruction. You know, and then but within six months, you know, I was editing, and, and then you know, within a year, I was doing some mixing. That's a thing that really doesn't happen anymore. I mean, when I was I, I studied audio in school, and they said, you know, back in the day, you just go work at a studio, say, hey, I'll work here for free, and then before you know it, you're on sessions helping, and then you're the you're the dude. You're you're mixing, yes. you're engineering. That is exactly what happened. Yeah, and now it's like, oh no, you need a degree, and you need to do all this stuff, and oh, yeah. and and there's no studios anymore. So congratulations with your worthless degree. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't, <laughs> I don't know what people think they're going to end up doing because everybody can do it at their house. Yep. So you know, pretty weird. Now here's a, another uh, weird mixing question because I, like I said, I, I mix every day. I mix music, and I've done some uh, video stuff. I, you know. 
I have a, a YouTube series called Tiger's Fang, which is a really terrible kung fu movie uh, series that my friends and I did, and that was I the, see it. yeah, you got to see it. I did all the foley, I did all the dialogue, all the music, so I, I was doing all of it. So I really uh, came to appreciate what you guys do, and I started watching television with sort of like a different brain, you know, like a different hat on, just like saying, "Wow, oh, how'd they get that?" Now, so here's a, like a, a little question. Uh, have you ever like encountered, say, an actor that has such a voice, like a particular voice, that you just can't get it to cut or you can't get it to penetrate the mix? Has that ever happened to you? Uh, I'm not afraid of equalization. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I, uh, most of the time, though, it, it, I, frankly, it's it's the reverse. Typically, the the thing that's problematic is uh, an actor will have a, a a nasally piercing kind of thing going on, and you're trying to tame that down more than any the more than you know. Certainly, uh, what well, Ray heck, uh, you know, um, Liev uh, you know, who plays Ray Donovan. My gosh, uh, Schreiber, he 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 was a you know he'd be in a scene and he'd go uh, you know he sits up like that. <laughs> And and you're like, I what did he say? And, and you're and you're just you know trying to figure out a way for the audience to understand it. And uh, I mean, if I solo it and I can't understand it, then nobody's going to understand it. So, uh, but yeah, I know what you're talking about. The only thing you do is just put a lot of mid range in it and turn it up very loud. <laughs> do you ever get to a point where you have to tell Rob like, okay? I can't hear what this person's saying. You have to chill it. You know, cool it with what you're doing. Do you oh guys, sure, you, yeah. He, we're, we're that constantly we're constantly giving each other, you know. Hey, can you get out of my way? Or you know, hey, can you lower the music here for this thing? Or hey, can you lower the effects here so I can get this to cut through? Uh, and yeah, but and the whole idea is that you know, you know, the only reason we're here is to steer the audience's sonic attention. You know, right. uh, you you want to hear the dialogue here. You'll, you the dialogue's not important here. What's important is this car doing this thing. You know, and, and the, that they're. Whatever they're saying is is superfluous. It doesn't matter. So it's almost and, like you guys um, in the audio realm are directing this show, because you you have yeah. to really figure out what's important for people to hear and direct their attention to the right spot. Yeah, and and and, and of course, when we do a playback for the uh, directors and producers, there are times when they go, "You guys have totally missed the mark <laughs> and, uh, right here," you know, and 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 you don't understand what's going on. So we we need to rebalance this. Yeah, and uh, and 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 we and after we rebalance it, we go, "Wow, we didn't we didn't understand what they wanted, and uh, what what was obvious to us was not the obvious thing that he wanted." So, yeah, it works both ways. And other times, you know, they come in and you know, we we had a playback last night. For a show, and the executives came in, and they had six or seven notes. You know, it was for forty-two minutes. You know, right? So you never know what's going to happen in a playback. And a couple of weeks ago, we had a playback on uh, this series, and we did fixes for until they ran out of money. Literally, you know, wow. you know, now, they were like, <laughs> "Go ahead." Yo, is there ever a situation where you're mixing something, and like you just mentioned with a Liev, like say, or any actor, say they say something that's completely unintelligible, no matter what you do. Um, it, at, at that point, do you just say, okay, this is what it is, this is the best it's going to get, or do you tell someone, hey, we got to get that guy back in to reread this line? Well, you have options. You have options when you're mixing dialogue. You you have the option of looking around at the super, supervising sound editor and saying, do we have another take on this? This is unintelligible. And he'll go, sure. And, and they, of course they have another take, most of the time, you know, because they take you know, four or five takes of a scene from different angles. And so there's, there's going to be multiple takes. And then it's a question of whether or not it's going to fit into his mouth for the, for the shot. That oh, you so make. you actually fly it in from the other oh, take. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Then the, 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 the editor will, he'll, he'll, he'll find it. Another, he'll find one or two, however many takes he thinks will work. And they'll go, okay, I've got that. And then he puts it on a server and you just download it into your pro tool session and it shows up on the timeline, and then you audition it, and uh, and then we pick one, and we use it. You know. Wow, that's fascinating. Um, and and also also, there's a lot of times before we even get our hands on the show that the um, uh, the, the picture editor will realize that man, this we this is unintelligible. This will never work. And and the supervising sound editor will during the spotting go, yeah, well we'll just shoot some ADR for that. And what for your viewers ADR is automated dialogue replacement and what that means is uh, they the actors go into an ADR studio which is just a little which is a room and they have a mic there and they okay you got to read this line 
and uh, uh, quick, get in the car. That's the line. Well, what it'll be is it'll, they'll roll back and they'll put the picture in a loop and they get three beeps and it goes beep, beep, beep. Okay, we got to get in the car. So where the fourth beep would hit is where you say the line. And so, and they, they'll do, and so you, we, I put in ADR constantly in, in these shows. Some, some, some of it's additional dialogue, some of it's replacement dialogue. Now, um, how many mics are you getting from the set? Are you getting body mics and boom mics? And, uh, and yeah, there, it depends on the production, on the, on the guy who is the production mixer. How he, some production mixers have, uh, you know, laughs on everybody and there's a boom. And so, you know, you get, you might have seven you know, mics available for a scene. Okay. And, uh, and that's a great thing, you know, and you, uh, and you mix those, not him, right? Uh, no, I, but that, that go, the supervisor, the dialogue editor will, will go through the mics as he's editing dialogue and he'll figure out what's the, what the best mic is. And it's really cool in pro tools. It's essentially a, like a control shift, you know, alternates, you know, kind of thing where you can, there's a list for every, for every angle, you know, oh, wow. and, yeah, and, and and so it's it's they have a lot of flexibility. Is that so like a playlist? Uh, kinda, yeah. But it's it's uh, you know, like a, you know, we when we get to looking at some screens, we can show you some of this okay, stuff. Okay. Oh, great. Um, you know. Now, one more question before we get into that, because I'm I know I'm sure the viewers are dying for me to shut up and stop asking these questions, but I I want to know because this is a rare opportunity for me. When I met you uh, backstage at the BOC show, it, it was like one of these weird situations where we didn't have enough time to talk, and you told me what you did, and I thought it was the coolest thing ever, and you started elaborating on it. But I now I get to ask you all these questions. Um, <laughs> you told me you told me um, that they what you get from production is just like a staggering amount of tracks that sometimes you wish would be pre-comped. Um, like for, for example, what do you, oh, what do you guys get? That's more for the effects than me. Yeah. So, so Rob, uh, what do you usually get? That's like mind numbing. <laughs> well, it just depends. I mean, sometimes you just get a staggering amount of tracks that, you know, and some might be redundant or something. So working with a sound supervisor, on this show in particular, we've pared it down to where, you know, so you don't have, you know, five tracks that are kind of similar, you know, so we just need one good one, mm -hmm. of, you know, and then we mix that with however ma other many tracks we have, you know, just so we don't have enough time, you know, it's, it, it, we always have a set amount of time that we have to get a show done. Oh, and how much is, like how, like, how long would it take you to do a 42-minute show, for example? We have two days to mix Kevin probably saves the world, and we have three days to mix. And these are uh, nine-hour days. Nine hours. Uh, and we have three days to mix um, uh, The Gifted. Wow. And that includes two playbacks and then fixes too, also. Yeah. So it's, yeah, 27 hours to do The Gifted and 18 to do uh, Kevin Saves the World. Jeez. So, I mean, we, we, we are always trying to be as, if, as efficient as we can, you know. And so working with the sound supervisor and the, and the effects editors... They've uh, really made it better on the show. You know, easier for me to mix. Yeah, and and the and other the time allotted. The other thing is, is that, you know, we got stuff in front of us, but we we're, there's constantly, you know, we have the supervising sound editor and when the music editor are are you know constantly being tasked by the production company of oh we want to change this cue or oh we want to do this we want to change this shot you know we got to conform and we we got we got a new picture coming and and so they're constantly reinf they're like this huge reinforcement for us. Of course, you know, because we, the only thing we're doing is blending all this stuff that's been edited. And I guarantee you that, you know, we get, we have two or three days to work on this, but they've had a week to edit and they've got, you know, multiple people editing this stuff. So it's a lot of work on their end to, and, and if we give them feedback of, okay, to make it just like Bob was saying, you know, where, where this is too wide, we need to pare it down, blah, blah, blah. And it's a teamwork thing. It's, it's a lot of people involved and, uh, you know, it's a, it's a good thing that way. Um, here's an, an artistic mixing question. Um, are you using things like delays and reverbs in your mix to create depth, or is that already pre-done for you? What's a, what's a reverb? <laughs> I'll look it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm using uh, – we, we use all sorts of plugins, you know, lots of plugins for uh, delay and reverb. Uh, but Bob used a lot of delay for uh, – for uh, cool stuff, you know. What is that thing called? Slapper? Yeah, they, we have a Boy, plugin called yeah, Slapper, we, and it's yeah, a lot it's, of fun. It is the coolest thing. I mean, it'll be a gunshot over here. It'll go, you know, it's oh, these, really? The fly through the room. It's just the neatest thing. And uh, um, and I, I typically, 
the task for me more than anything is just to get some uh, room ambience uh, matching sort of things. I uh, dialogue, you know, you'll have uh, someone who will, there'll be a natural ambience, you'll have a boom mic that's four feet away and they'll be going, get out of my house, you know, and then it'll be echoing in on the set a little bit. Then uh, the next angle, uh, he turns over to somebody and goes, blah, 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 but, but it's a different mic or whatever and it's dry, right? And so you got to, whoa, shucks. You get, and so you got to match the ambience so it's a constant task. So I've got, I, and, and I use the simplest program. I use uh, Reverb One, which is just a simple Avid DigiDesign yeah. reverb. And but it's for some reason it does very short reverbs very well. And I've got you know like dozens of of, of you know, I got you know all these you know interior bus uh, you know you know small room four you know uh, you know ugly bathroom whatever you know whatever <laughs> ugly bathroom. <laughs> 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 uh, do you I actually believe? No, no, no. Oh, oh, come on! <laughs> it's it's there was there in, in Justified. There was this uh, this uh, prostitution thing, you know, thing, right? You know, there was this. Uh, it was uh, a brothel, okay, out out in the woods, right? Then they had all these trailers that that the prostitutes worked in, and so there was one season where this one prostitute was a was a principal in the show. And and we were in her trailer often, and so I had to come up, and it had this weird slap to it, and I had to come up with a reverb, and I had to call, and I called it whore trailer, you know. <laughs> and so anytime I Bob's amazing says, this is my job for whore trailer, <laughs> yeah. Rusty goes there often are you- <laughs> <laughs> to the reverb. <laughs> are, are you guys using impulse responses at all? Like, would that make this? Um, that sounds like this would be like a shoe in oh, for yeah, impulse responses. I mean, I don't, but uh, uh, yeah, uh, uh, there's uh, there's some there's some good IR programs out there. Uh, that I have not delved into, and I should. I've I've gotten to where I depend on certain things, and I've got a certain number of bag of. You know, I got a bag of tricks that has certain things, and I just depend on it. Mm. But I use IR for uh, uh, with uh, you know with music, you know, doing like cabinets. I buy those, you know. Nice. So okay, I'm going to uh, stop asking these ridiculous questions, and let's watch you do your thing. It looks like you have an episode of Gifted behind you. Yeah. And okay. that's that's a, a for those of you who haven't seen it yet. That is a spinoff of the X Men film universe. So here we have a scene. Uh, this is my son Scott, who plays Mind Your Your son Jacob, who has lived down the street from you since he was six years old. Chuck, come on, please, just go. He's lying, man. Just go in. You coming for nothing? Oh, Sorry, man. No, Chuck. Don't. <laughs> okay, so there we have uh, these guys in the front yard having a bit of an argument, and essentially uh, the you know you you can see we're going from one angle to another, um, uh, and this is uh, you know different angles that are cut together, where you know if you listen to one come and go, it'll, it's kind of like uh, listen to them, mom. They hate us. You know, here here comes a line that's well, maybe it's time these people learned. And then it goes away. And then another. Yes, I do. Listen to them, Mom. They hate it. Then on another track down the down stream, you've got this angle. That people are going to die. That comes in like this. Andy. And then you got, on the next track, you got this line. You don't mean that. But when you play them all together, they sound like a normal people conversation. Are die. Well, maybe it's time these people learned. Andy. You don't mean them. Yes, I do. Listen to them, Monday. Okay, and so if you look at the volume moves, uh, you can see that I'm making moves to adjust just a little bit here and there, uh, the volume. And I'm doing it in phases. You know, the, the first when I do a scene, the first pass is essentially I get I level it out, and it, there'll there'll be bumping in tonality, and I just let that go. But I get the major level done. Then I'll do the next pass, and I'll I'll I'll, I'll ride the tone. On the scene, you know, on each angle, and 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 you just go back and forth. The typical thing is, I'm working. So what? We can take those guys. Yeah, of course we can take. That didn't work, and that is the hit a button. Why should we have to go back? Didn't you hear them? There's an army out there. Make an adjustment, guys. Yeah, of course we can keep going. But we do that, people are gonna die. Well, maybe oops, that didn't work. Go back. Are you, you know, are you are you automating the yeah. are you automating the EQ or are you just setting oh, up? Oh yeah, everything's tracks? automated. We're, we're on a we're on an icon and, and we're we're mixing in the box, in Pro Tools, and uh, uh, in in Pro Tools essentially, I'm uh, feeding all the dialogue into a um, into what I call a dialogue chain, and in that chain there's a a, a, a compressor, a deesser. 
and then some EQ. Uh, but I've got, and on the channels, I've, I've got, you know, uh, uh, Lot, I have a trim for gain mm -hmm. at, the, at the beginning of the channel. Next thing I have is some equalization. The next thing I have is some de is some deessing on the channel. And then, then after that, I have some some no a noise reduction plug-in by Waves called it's a W it's called WNS. And then I have that I have that WNS on the dialog chain as well. So there's times when I might just have one noisy angle on one tr on one angle, and I'll and, and I'll have that on one track, and I'll incorporate that that noise reduction on that one track instead of putting it on the chain, which is you know, affecting the in all the tracks. So, anyway, that's um, that's what you do there. So that's raw dialogue. Then we have what's called ADR, which I was mentioning earlier. And here comes an ADR line here, uh, right here. And to them, on they hate us. Send them out, and we'll go away. And he's and he, this guy's outside, so he sounds dull. And I'm playing him off camera. I'll go down and find another ADR line there. Uh, see if we can find one here real quick. Zoom out. Here we go. Here comes some. So here we go. A fight. Go. 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 So what's going on right there? All these people are running away, and essentially they wanted the expediency of, the, of them running away. And what you've got in the I can find the ADR. There it is. If I solo the ADR, it's going to sound kind of silly. Because, but these actors came in and did this because they got paid to do it. <laughs> and here it is. You'll hear them. So they're just breathing. <laughs> So wow, that that was just that was added to the scene because there was these little, that that made it more come more alive. So that's essentially what the what the dialogue is doing. Uh, the music I can show you real quick is done thusly. Um, let's see, uh, the music is here. We go, bang! There we go. So uh, here comes a piece of score. I'll. Uh, uh, here, get more of an over the shoulder here, if you would, and, and, and maybe they can get an idea of uh, how this works. Uh, get rid of that. So what I have is uh, we have stereo pairs, and uh, of uh, and they are you know essentially pads on, and synths and bass and percussion, blah blah blah. Each cue is a little different from the other. So as we go through this particular uh, cue here, well, let's do this. And so we we'll solo this cue, get up to it here. So there's the cue and uh, the elements on the different tracks, you know, the composer split it out so we can have some control over it. Everything is essentially at unity gain and then and it feeds one uh, uh, sub, uh, it feeds one bus and then I have that bus show up on another fader so I just move that fader and that's the whole thing at unity gain. If I want to change the balance, I'll pull or push a fader on the on the elements. Now is, is the composer... Um recording music with 5.1 in mind or is that up to you uh s some of them deliver 5.1 uh but most of them in tv in film they, they typically will deliver 5.1 some tv shows deliver 5.1 uh elements but uh I, in, for expediency most people are delivering left right and i'll I, then i spread it out you know into the theater so what so. what would you what what's like a typical thing that you'll do uh in 5.1 with music uh, stems okay well uh typically i keep transient things more toward the front uh, I keep I and I then I take uh, legato things pads strings that sort of thing get that around you hmm. uh, and so if uh, and then uh, I uh, um, uh, so you know like a drum thing is going doo, 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 doo. I'll keep that more toward the front and then the strings will be around you uh, and depending upon you know the, what the elements are I mean it for the most part there's a lot of in, in this kind of a show you got a lot of pads and a lot of uh, a lot of sound designy sounding pad kind of things like which I can give you an idea and those I get all around the room so you know um, that's how that one's that's, that's one track there the, the beginning there it just sounds like a you know a record scratch yeah, yeah. just to get it going and uh, what's this guy
So that's another track, individual track. And then it goes away. Then you've got this track over here. He likes this is pretty neat. <laughs> you know? And uh, and that's going on as well. So, you know, you, you you pull it all in there, put it all in, it's like, you know, it's just this crazy sounding cue. It's cool. I dig it. <laughs> so anyway, so that's how the music comes to me. Uh, for that sort of thing. Can you show us the, um, I'm assuming you have like a joystick to do all the panning? Uh, oh yeah, we got joysticks. Can, can, can uh, right you show here. it to us? He's taking a shot of it here. here now, here, here's the, I, oh, there cool. it is right there. That's the joysticks right here, there. Here's the problem. I would play with that freaking thing all day if I had your job. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, oh, this sound has to go everywhere. Every, everything would be that helicopter you mentioned from the movie. That, I'd be, yeah, exactly. Every sound would be like that with me. Like close encounters, right? <laughs> So right, so that's that's the dialogue and the mute, the score and the di and the and the regular dialogue in the ADR. The only other thing you have in music is a thing called source music. And let me see if there's any in this episode. Uh, here we go. And what source music is 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 uh, the stuff that you want to do, Richie, which is sync licensing. You make money doing that. <laughs> uh, I mean, which you probably have done. Have you sync licensed any stuff? I don't think so. No. no. Oh, dude, there's big cash in there, babe. Uh, here, we'll talk uh, afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> so here we got a. Here we are in a bar, and uh, just to play it louder. So I've got it, and so what's going on on the screen here is you know a guy walking into a bar, and and that's that's in the mix. And so if I take away that automation and just play the mix, you'll hear. You'll hear him walking to the bar and have a conversation with this guy. We're minus effects here, aren't we, Bob? Uh, how, how did they get away from sending services? We were in an so old warehouse. So you in the background, right? Mm -hmm. I found a crawl space and hid in there until they... And so what I'm doing with that is I'm just, you know, taking some low end out of it, taking some high end out of it, putting it in a little reverb, to a room reverb, and, right. uh, and, and drowning it and getting it out of the way of the dialogue. That's, that's awesome. And so that's just like... Um, when you say the sync licensing, that's just like a drop-in, already completed piece yeah. of music just to complete the scene for incidental whatever. Yeah, and you and you get you get residuals on that if you sync license a tune. Every time it airs anywhere in the world, you get money. Amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you know that you know that stuff, money, right? Yeah. Uh, that's awesome. So this is you have like a really cool job, man. This is amazing. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'll just show you like this one little scene here. There's a a big event here where the sun blows away a door with his, using his powers. But so my session is that uh, I have hard effects and then I just scroll down and you have sound design type material and then folly and, and then backgrounds. You know, so so I just continually scroll up and down looking for my tracks because I want to make sure I don't miss anything, you know. Otherwise, Rusty will yell at me. <laughs> So, so here, I'll just play uh, one section here, just so you can see, hear some individual. So uh, each element, you know, I can pan each element, you know. So if, if something's exploding there and you see it going by us on the, in, the, in the screen, you know, I'll pan each one individually, you know. And, you know, I, I get to use the panner probably more than Rusty does, you know. <laughs> and, and also with backgrounds, you can put things all around you and it doesn't, uh, you know, it doesn't bother you, you know, when you're listening to it. It doesn't distract you. So, uh, you know, I, I've done that with, with all these individual elements, you know, for this explosion. And so then, uh, you know, each, each one has a different element to it. I don't, I don't know how well you can hear that, but, you know, each one is a different type of debris, you know, bricks or wood or whatever. And so then, uh, let me just play the section here now. Go. Open this door or we're coming in. Ah! 
so I get to use the subwoofer a lot more, you know, than Rusty does sometimes. I, he can use it in music and stuff, but I get to use it, you know, I get to play more. And so, uh, you know, for people with 5.1 systems like yourself, you know, you get rewarded with a show like this because, you know, you get a, a good kick, kick in the gut, you know, when that type of thing happens. Now, are you automating sends to the subwoofer too? Yeah, er everything's automated, you know, so. So, I yeah. Mean, it will just so you're you're bringing that in for an effect and you know just to elicit yeah. an emotion or I something. Mean, just, yeah. just for an individual clip, you know, you you can add sub to it. You know, if it if it calls for it, you know, or uh, if you really want it to, you know, have an impact and then get out, you know, you can just automate that for that short second, you know, and then give room to the music or something like that. You know, here's so a that's question. what we do a lot. Here's a question. Um, it looks like are, are you guys running the same session right now? Well, we each have our own individual session, and then we record to to one master session. So, uh, are, are you doing two separate pro? Are those are those two computers right now? Yes, two two Pro Tools systems. Yeah, okay. he, he has one system. I have one system. So we we can both be playing together, or I can, you know I can go offline and I'll listen on headphones mm -hmm. and I'll try and do some editing or mixing. He he can do the same thing, and then we you know we'll say okay, you want to do it together. So we put, both go online. And then play together and, and mix together. And it's when you when you're saying go online, it syncs your two set your two computers and your two sessions. Sessions. Yeah, it syncs it to the picture and our and our sessions together. Oh, awesome! Uh, yeah. So what what we have is four four things. We have uh, that our each of us have a Pro Tool system uh, that has edited material, and then we sum that material together to a an, a third Pro Tool system that is a recorder. That's a recorder. And it's recording 5.1 and, and, and LTRT and various other L delivery specifications mm. that we need to deliver. And then we, uh, the, the picture is also on a, on a, on a Mac uh, that's synced in the system. Oh, so what you're saying is it's not like a render or it could bounce to disk. It's you're actually recording to another machine like a tape recorder? Exactly. Yes. Oh, wow. Yeah, because, because you know, you, you, you get it all done, and then you when you play it back, you record it. And then when you do fixes, they go, okay, I want to change this. Well, you just punch right in for that for that little spot and, and make it different on the recorder. Oh, so you don't have to render the entire 42-minute freaking file every single time you make a change. Right. So, yeah, I mean, it, it's obviously uh, easier and smarter to, to, you know, to bounce something to disc uh, in music. But uh, in this format, you know, you got to punch in and punch out. Amazing! I never even considered that. That's awesome. See, you learn stuff while doing watching the show. <laughs> Here's another big sound design scene. We'll, we'll just play through here. You can if you have someone to care about. Uh, here, that sounds so big. I'm gonna do it this way. Okay. Hello, our people. You heard Dreamer. They're working on. Okay, so each each person on this show, they have individual powers, and so you try to make each power sound different, you know. And each each person's power can have you know ten different tracks to it. So you you try and balance it, and then what works with the music at that moment, you know. So it's a constant battle, you know, basically to get things heard, you know, with what you need to hear at that time. Wow, it's so, I'm just looking. Thing. Can you scroll down your your your, uh, your track count again? Because that's just mind numbing to me. <laughs> oh. well, yeah, they're they're pretty small tracks right now, you know. And, yeah. And so, uh, like these are just hard effects, basically like car doors, you know, and uh, doors and stuff like that. And then you get into the you get into the sound design thing. This is where the powers are. And then uh, you know, then you get down into the folly, and then I have uh, some PFX and then more backgrounds. You know, so you just uh, wow. You know, it's a, it, it keeps us you know on our toes throughout the day. So don't you kind of like wish that sometimes they would just like you know comp some of this stuff before they gave it to you? <laughs> well, I mean, if they 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 could do that, but then if uh, somebody says, "Ah, uh, can you get rid of those crickets?" and then we'd go, "Oh, sorry, we <laughs> can't yeah. do that." You know, so it's it's a lot easier when when it's like this, and then we just you know it's our job, so you know we're mixers, so we mix it, you know. But if somebody says, oh, "Get rid of those crickets," you know, I can just quickly mute it. Right, problem solved, you know. And then and Rusty said he has you know a, a, a processing chain on every single channel. Do you have a, your own processing chain on on each channel? 
Well, I have a plug into that I, I can use. I, I don't. I mean, I always have EQ and compression in, you know, and then I have a limiter at the end of the chain. Right. But uh, if I want to send to a reverb, I, I have a, a send that I can just, you know, activate at that when I need it. You know, so I have like four different reverbs, uh, a delay. And, uh, you know, I'll show you that slapper. Which Yeah, I was going to ask you that next. <laughs> nope, yeah, that's cool. It looks cool. It's a good looking plug. Now, these are 5.1 plugins. Uh, they they can be stereo or they can be five one you know they can be mono. So here, let me see. I'll pull it up here. See, I don't get to play with this stuff because I have the cheap version of Pro Tools. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. So so here's like a you know this is how you can see, visualize what the delay is that you'll hear. So you can put the delays. This is your five point one representation. Yeah. So these are your surrounds, so your center, left left and right. You know, so you can move them around like where you want that delay to be. Oh, you know, wow! You can also change the volume, you know, and or, or how how much feedback each one has, you know. So I mean, you you could spend hours, do, you know, doing one, but there are a lot of good presets also that you know you can just go too quickly and grab something. That's incredible. Yeah, because you know, like time is always a consideration, you know. So it, if they wanted to let us play forever, you know, we could, but. So you're, you're out. You're outside. Someone shoots a gun in a uh, industrial area with a lot of buildings, and you have to simulate that gunshot hitting each one of those buildings. Yeah, and it. I mean, and it's also great. You know, like our favorite thing is like when they shoot out in the. You know, there's a in Justified. There's a great scene where they had a a gun battle. You know, a duel almost in a big boxy canyon. You know, and we had that thing ring out forever. And it just sounded <laughs> so great. You know, <laughs> we loved it. This is you know, fascinating. That's, that's the fun part of this job. What's your first step when you get the 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 session with everything in it? Now, is well, this a, is this session pre compiled for you? Like, are you just getting the session from the server and you opening it up and it looks like this with everything placed already? Well, uh, no, it gets delivered by a sound editor, mm -hmm. you know, and they were a dialogue editor, music editor. So they they give it to our mix tech, and our mix tech pulls everything in in the morning, you know, and so. Uh, Basically, we'll come in. I'll start working on backgrounds. Rusty will come in and, and start working on dialogue. We'll try and work on the big speakers at the same time. Sometimes that doesn't work, and then I'll go to headphones or something like that. You know, so we'll try to just dub several minutes by ourselves, and then we just go together and put all the elements in and see how it works out. It's really strange to think about mixing in a room with someone else mixing. It almost seems counterintuitive, but it sounds like you can get a lot of it done with the headphones. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it, it's 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 kind of hard to mix on headphones for me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, me as well. Uh, but uh, you know, we were in a we had avoided uh, mixing different things simultaneously for years, and um, uh, we were when we were at Sony, we were on a, a traditional mixing platform, which uh, which you didn't do that. And so, but on the icon and mixing in the box, it's it's you find that you can do that. It, it, I mean, it's a it's a odd it's an odd thing. He'll be mixing all these birds in a scene, and I'll be on an, in an apartment scene with a dialogue thing going on. And he, you, you just tune out the other guy. What the other what's what's coming out of the speaker beyond your stuff, and you just focus on your stuff, and you do it. You know, and wow, you, you try to. You can't always do it. You know, it's not always easy. That, that's a skill because that would drive me up a freaking wall. If someone else, if like, if my wife starts doing laundry in the other room while I'm trying to mix, I go crazy. So, <laughs> you know, that I I that I give you guys credit because I mean it's a this is a completely foreign way to work for me the way you're describing this, you know. But uh, we don't do it that often. I mean, it's in the morning typically when we're more alert, mm -hmm. and then in the afternoon we we mix together. You know, when we're less alert and uh, <laughs> and we go, okay, this is what the show sounds like. You know. Uh, but it's it's it does save time and uh, you know I the the dialogue thing is 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 kind of tedious uh, and so is you know mixing backgrounds so why do it together right you know just do it do it independent of each other and, and then, then it gets to the point where I go how far are you in and he'll go well, I'm uh, I've, I've, I'm 40 minutes in and I'll go well I'm only 18 let's just start mixing I'm tired of doing this you know and yeah. then we'll just start mixing you know so here's um here's an interesting question um or a fun question. What's the hardest show you guys have ever had to mix? Or like the hardest yeah, episode? Go first. Uh, well, I mean, we did a show uh, called Saints and Strangers. Saints and Strangers is, a, is about uh, pilgrims. 
but it was a uh, it was very hard because there were so many tracks and we had very little time to do it you know and it was it was a movie of the week and we had maybe six days to do four hours worth of work you know oh my God. scream no it wasn't even that it was four days to do 180 it a, minutes it, it, it was four <laughs> it days was to do 180 schedule. minutes and that's that's out the that's fixed and delivered and it was a kick-ass show you know it was just uh, we, uh, well, a the, lot of things happening. the in killer it. was we had a, an incredibly good editorial company and they knew what they were yeah. It was a feature guy, um, uh, Victor uh, Ennis, Victor yeah. Ennis, <laughs> and 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 uh, he was he had superbly prepared everything, and we were balls to the walls mixing this thing, and uh, we were mixing practically in real time, and it was a big thing. It was like Indians everywhere and pilgrims and you know people you know fighting with Ships. hatchets, you know tomahawks and stuff, and it was you know. It was amazing, you know, and and, it, and Squanto and it, was in it. <laughs> and it, and it, uh, it sounded great, you know. I mean, I don't, did, know, how, it, I don't know how we did it. It know? really did end up sounding extremely good. It was like it did, proof put in the pudding of that shooting from the hip is like jamming, you know. It's oh like, yeah, it's like music, you know. You know, doing a take, you know, real quick. You know, some, you know how the demo sometimes sounds better than? Oh yeah. Than that? I it's watched. That. I watched a uh, an interview with Chris Lorealgy, and he said, "I mix in four hours." He goes, I, it, that's his method. It's like, I, I'm going to mix this song. It's going to be finished in four hours, and that's it. And wh- however it comes out is how it comes out. So I guess well, there's... You know, you know Chasm, and, and he'll tell you Todd Rungren does the same thing. He mixes a song fast. Really? Gets it done, you know? And, uh, you know, he, just well, a few, he, he, would, he would mix an album in two days. That's one reason I don't like work at, working in features is because you spend too long. It's like you're on, you're on it for seven weeks on 100 minutes. Oh, wow. 10 minutes, you know, I'd, I'd rather spend, you know, four days on 180 minutes, you know, you, you find that you come up with some cool stuff. So if there's um, a, a young engineer who wants to get into this field, what, are, what, what would you recommend they do? Don't? <laughs> well, they're all doing the same thing. They're all, they're all, they all, you know, get, they do what you're talking about. Mm-hmm. They, they go to USC film school mm-hmm. sound, or they go to full sail or whatever it is. And, and, and the, the cream always rises to the top. You know, you can tell when someone walks into the room when they're 20 years old, whether they're going to make it or not in this business. Uh, it's like, um, I'm all, I'm all. Oh, yeah. This guy who was an intern at Sony earlier this summer, he was hanging out and this kid, 20 years old from Washington, DC. And he, you, he, the way he handled his comportment and the way he, he understood what was going on. And you were just like, you know, he, he, when he hung out with us for like four days and when he left, Bob and I said, "Well, he's he's going to be running the studio in five years." I, you know, <laughs> you could tell he was just one of those people. I noticed you said you had the Icon uh, console back there. Is that standard on, on every um, post, uh, you know, mixing room? Yeah, the, the Pro Tools is is standard all throughout Hollywood as far as the the digital audio workstation that everyone uses, mm-hmm. uh, and um, the just about. Every place switched maybe seven or eight years ago, maybe ten years ago to icons, and because you know uh, they just you can do so much with them, and uh, and we were we were on one of the very last traditional consoles, you know, earlier this summer mixing on a Harrison traditional console where it was you know the signal was running through it and you're mixing it together and then and you know. So yeah, this is kind of what it is, and the S6 is now becoming, uh, you know, taking the place of the Icon because they don't support the Icon anymore. Avid doesn't, and uh, my, I've mixed on the S6, and so has Bob. And I prefer the Icon myself, but that, that's just me. And I just, some other I, just like it better. I just noticed you were flying on it, and it looked like okay, this guy's mixed quite a bit on this thing. <laughs> I, you know, actually not that much. Uh, I mixed for it on a year, a year on it about seven years ago. And then, uh, and then we just, uh, earlier this year, we got a call to go over to Universal and, okay, you know, you got, we have an icon. So fine. So I, we sat down and Bob had never really mixed on one yeah. heavily, heavily. And we just sat down and we started mixing the TV show. You know, it's just like, you know, it's, it's that age old thing, you know, you know, I remember the first time, uh, I, somebody looked at me, you know, they approached me, can you do this show? Uh, are you available? I said, yes. And they said, we're going to do it at such and such place. And they have an icon. And they said, do you know how to operate an icon? I had no idea how to do it. I said, of course I do. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, it, that, you know, my, that's a, one of the greatest le- lessons or pieces of advice you can tell anybody in this industry. It's never say no. <laughs> <You know? laughs> when, when, you know, same thing. Uh, when, when Blue Oyster Cult's manager 
called me up and he said, you're a keyboard player, right? I said, of course I am. That was a lie, <laughs> you know, and I just basically, okay, I have, you know, three weeks to learn how to play this stuff. But, uh, you know, you, you if, if the gig is there, if you say no, they'll give it to somebody else. And exactly. if you say yes, you do it, you might be able to fake it and get away with it for a while and you'll keep the gig. <laughs> So that's, hey, that's man, a great piece of advice. I, I heard you play guitar and keyboard in uh, Big Bear Lake, and I thought you kicked ass. Yes, yeah, see, I, I'm totally great. full of crap. No. <laughs> 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 Anything you guys want to promote, or do you have um, you know Twitter or Facebook? Or uh, any sort yeah, of? I mean, uh, you, I, I would promote, uh, I have a website called onerch.net, and it has uh, my music on it. And anybody who wants to go there, I'm, I have three albums out on Spotify. Uh, it's Rusty Smith is the artist, and uh, there's another artist named Rusty Smith uh, who plays uh, sax, <laughs> who plays trumpet, I think, and that's not me. It, I play guitar. We'll and kill him. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> what are you promoting, Bob? I am. Uh, I'm, I'm available for work after uh, this show is finished. <laughs> uh, or, uh, I don't. I don't have a website, so no, I have nothing to promote. Okay, uh, Twitter or anything like that? Anything you want people to find you at? No? No. <laughs> oh, I'm on Twitter, yeah. Okay, what's your, what's your Twitter? What Rusty Soundsmith, I think is what I'm called. Cool. Yeah. Well, I this has been fascinating and a ton of fun, and I can't thank you guys enough for your time because I know you have long days and you stayed late just to do this for me and the Band Geek viewers. So on behalf of all of them and myself, thank you very much. This was awesome. You're very welcome. Well, thank it was a lot you. of fun. And and when can they hear your work on the Gifted again? Can you uh, give us that the uh, time it airs? What was that? Uh, when does the Gifted when, air? Yeah, oh, gifted it's it's air. on Monday it's, night. Uh, I think at nine o'clock on Fox. On Fox. Very uh, cool. Nine o'clock on the coast. Eight, I guess, in the central. So look yeah. out for it to hear these guys' amazing work. Thank you so much. This is awesome. Thank you. Very cool. Thank you.